And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Rhyme. And today I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to finish this off in the background. Just this uh, ultra coal industrial brick, all the liquid oxygen, I'm sort of going to drain it out of here and get rid of it. I don't want it showing up back here. The liquid oxygen, liquid lock, I could not get it to work. No matter what I did, it's just uh, anytime anything dropped in it, there was just wasn't enough temperature range, no matter how much oxygen I put in there, no matter how much coolant I applied. So eventually I just, uh, yeah, I skimped out and used one of those little liquid blob, super coolant liquid locks. It's the only way I could do it. So if we check here, yeah, you'll see there's little blobs of super coolant and that just stops any gases escaping. So we're able to make a little vacuum area in here and this vacuum area, we seal off with the visco gel that allows our, our uh, dupes access in and out without causing any huge problems. Yeah, I would have preferred the liquid oxygen liquid lock. It was it was pretty cool, but ah, it, it just uh, not really feasible, it seems. However, at this temperature range, the only gases that can exist in here are hydrogen. Everything else is either a liquid or a solid. Well, okay, oxygen is a liquid. Everything else is a solid. <laughs> um, I'm trying to keep... Oh, you know what? Let's see if we can soup these up. I'm trying to keep the uh, polluted water out of here, but as you can see, it keeps flashing back and forth. I, I may have to insulate that or do something better. It's just the, the gas around here is so cold. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to manage this, but uh, we'll sort something out in that litter. What I want to sort out now is I want to get a few things that need doing done. Uh, main thing is food. These hatches are just, uh, they're very labor intensive. They're fine early on, but I'd like to switch to something less problematic. Plus, I'm going to eat through all my igneous rock if I'm not careful. So I want to finish off this farm. I'm going to do this off screen. I'm just going to fast forward about 50 cycles while I knock this all out of the way. I want to finish off this wild steep weed farm so we can get our food sorted. Once the food's up and running or once the farm crops are done, we'll have to put in some oh, oh, I'll have to put in some pepper nuts as well. I want to do sleet wheat bread. So I'm going to need pepper nuts and I'll have to do a little heating loop for that. I'll cut back in for that bit. And then we're going to want to stick in a kitchen. I want to stick in a proper kitchen. Though I may want to modify the whole base. You know what? No, no, no. we'll put in a, uh, a proper kitchen that can handle sleep wheat bread, but I'm going to leave off modifying the whole base just for a while longer. Uh, yeah, because after all of that, I want to put in a proper power supply because this, it works, but I would prefer to have a lot more power. So we'll go straight into a petroleum boiler and we're going to use one with a super coolant aqua tuner as the heat source because, well, it's convenient and quick to set up. Anyway, I am going to set these up. I am going to do the crops going to put them all in and uh, yeah we'll cut back in a little bit after much planting this is what we have uh, most of them are done well most of them I missed one over here and one over here so yes that is a little annoying but for some reason the pips wouldn't plant I wasn't going to get into it now when it comes to pips planting it comes up all the time but they'll do three then a gap of three three then a gap of three and you have to start in the top right and go to the left if we tried to do this from the opposite direction, say starting down here and going up, it, it won't work. They have a, it's just, mm, I don't want to get into too much detail. There's a whole, just uh, just Google a video on it. Uh, Brogtar did a great one on it where he, he went through all of it and he shows you how to do it. But effectively what you want to do is have four tiles gap between the top row and the next row and then start in the top right and work your way to the bottom left. And soon enough, you'll have a nice, massively huge, wild sleep wheat farm to provide food for all of your duplicates. Well, that's the plan. So once that's in place, and uh, now that that's all in place, I want to put in some pepper nuts. I'm using the Ani food calculator to figure out how many of these I need. And I need about 45 wild pepper nuts, assuming I don't even bother harvesting them and let them fall off the vine. I could uh, support about 20 duplicates with that, which will get me entirely off hatches, which will free up a bunch of labor and cut down on the amount of igneous rock I'm consuming. How much igneous rock have I actually got left? I have 574 tons of igneous rock. Yeah, I've gone through a lot, a lot of igneous rock in this playthrough so far. Anyway, I'll just uh, skip this forward while I get ready to put in the pepper nuts down here. This has been going pretty well. The sleet wheat farm is up. We've got... Uh the pepper nuts going in right now though I didn't realize how much space I had to leave I had to put down an extra layer of dirt it it got complicated I'm kind of glad I had that uh, create natural tiles mod installed it made this a lot simpler otherwise it would have been a lot of testing before I, I would have risked doing that but we've got this all started going along we've got the the pips planting I do have to put in a heating source I'm gonna have to probably stick it in a, a tepidizer over here and run some cool heating loops just to warm this whole place up it is way 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 too cold to be growing pepper nuts down here however what was that complication that arose ah yes i knew this was going to happen eventually but yeah the petroleum here froze just it happened eventually i think what i'm going to have to do here is just uh get rid of all of this oh by the way as well as that yeah that started sucking up uh hydrogen you know what we'll make that if the pressure's above 
Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to siphon all of this out, clean this whole mess up. Uh, ooh, can we fix that? Uh, maybe we can mop some of this up. I'm going to switch this out for uh, super coolant liquid lock, the same as up here, so it doesn't freeze. As well as that, it should give us a bit of a vacuum seal and hopefully no more hydrogen will get in here. Uh, as for how I clean out these tanks, I'm not. I'm just going to let it flow into the natural gas generators or and it'll break them a bit, but honestly, it's too much effort to try and break in there, clean out the tanks and then vacuum out that area again. Yeah, just uh, give us two minutes here to clean up this mess. There we go. Uh, new liquid lock in place. Liquid lock is made out of super coolant. Well, drips of super coolant because we can't afford a full on li super coolant liquid lock. And, ooh, um, but uh, yeah, you can see the natural gas is starting to take over in here. All I did with uh, the output is I fed it into this f gas filter. This gas filter is here for, oh, I can't even remember how long it was to filter out the natural gas that was down here. Uh, it was just a quick uh, rejig of the piping and next thing you know we had the natural gas coming out of here being filtered and the hydrogen just gets dumped back up here. It can get rechilled, it'll float back down. Should keep everything nice and stable. I've set this to drain the whole area. I want this entire area empty. We can fill it back up again after. You know what? Let's let it pressurize again. These, um... What do you call them? These oil refineries? They can't work at a pressure of over 5 kilos. If there's 5 kilos of gas pressure around them, they shut down. Eh, just one of those little quirks. I think we'll just leave it at 1 kilo and we'll come back later and see how much hydrogen left. If there's still a bunch of hydrogen left in there, I'll filter it out. But, done. Eh, back to getting the crops started again. Uh, how is our igneous rock looking? I've, I've done a little bit of uh, digging on the side. If you'll notice, the map is slowly becoming more and more excavated as I just uh, tear chunks out of it because occasionally I need more igneous rock just to keep my hatches fed. Uh, for the time being, we're sitting on how much of this stuff? We got about 625 tons left. So we're still, we're still pretty good. Uh, all of the, all the containers are full. So still want to get this done. I want to switch over to sleep wheat bread and then we'll see what happens. So I'll skip this out here. We'll come back in when I'm ready to put in a heating element. To heat up this whole area, it is a rather large area and the gas pressure is almost five kilos of pressure. Oh, um, three to four and a half, I suppose. What we're going to do is we're going to stick in a liquid tepidizer here. And the reason we use tepidizers is, uh, well, they're the best source of heat in the entire game, bar none. There's just nothing that provides as much uh, heating as this does. Uh, we'll just stick that there, maybe throw in a quick... Actually, we don't even need to use the tiles in here, do we? We can just use a regular tile. I'm not sure, we'll throw down a regular tile right about... How much water do we want? Eh. You know what? Let's make it nice and small. Uh, our duplicates will have to come in here to get the, uh, the pepper nuts out of there. Eh. Let me think about this for a second. You know what? That'll do. Um, all my dupes will be in exosuits anyway. It won't make a difference if uh, these last few pepper nuts are going to be on the edge. Also, I might throw in some uh, automation later on to remove the pepper nuts automatically, so meh. Uh, oh, the reason you want to use tepidizers is they're the most cost-efficient way of generating heat, and they, they far outpass anything else. Nothing else can even come close to them. In terms of energy to, or electricity to heat generated, Nothing tops up. The only downside is they're limited to about 85C tops. Otherwise, you could use them to run steam turbines and have net positive power output. In fact, you can if you're willing to use an automation glitch. There's an automation glitch you can use to uh, get these to go above their normal temperature. There's a few tricks, but I try to avoid exploits, so I'm not going to even attempt to do that. So, I'll just uh, skip this forward a bit while we get some more of this in place. Oh, yeah, that's another thing we're going to do. I'm going to be plumbing this whole area with pipes. Now, I'm not going to use radiant pipes everywhere, namely because that would be ridiculously expensive. So I'm going to use granite again. Granite is cheap and it does our job for us nicely. Now let me think, how am I going to run these around here? Hmm. And there we go. A nice big loop that goes all the way around just to spread out the heat. I'll probably throw in a few uh, pieces of radiant pipe made out of some precious metal at some point. Though I'm in no rush for now. All I want to do is get this filled up, put some water in here. Oh, and power. I don't have a main grid yet still, so I think I'm just going to throw in a couple of uh, random coal generators over here on the side and a smart battery, and that should give us the power necessary to run this little sucker. Now that that's all started, we still have to put in some water in here to get heated. Also, there's a pip egg in there. You know what? We'll, we'll worry about the pi pip egg later. Simple enough idea. We'll just throw in a couple of bottle empters. Ooh, uh, one bottle empter, it seems. Yeah, one, because there's all the plants above it. I can't put it anywhere else. Okay, okay, that's fine. One bottle empter, a bit of water, and then I think what we'll do is we'll throw in a few temperature shift plates. All we need is just a little bit of water and some heat from the tepidizer. Oh, automation sensor. Very important. We want to control the temperature. The water, we don't want it going too hot now, do we? Uh, you Give me an automation wire. Doesn't even matter what it's made out of. So, once this is all completed, we can get started on heating this whole area. All right, after a, a bunch of dumping water in here, it turns out it, take, it takes a lot 
and I mean a lot of water to get this tepidizer to activate until it was submerged in how much we're looking at here about 500 kilos yeah so it takes about 500 kilos of water before this thing activates but that's fine we can quickly crank up the uh, the amount of pressure in here a little bit higher we'll throw in like two or three temperature shift plates this thing can handle it uh, I've set the temperature here to 36 degrees that's a little low but there's method to the madness uh, 36 degrees will allow pepper nuts to grow just barely but it's also cool enough that it will allow my thimble reed to grow I want to move some thimble reeds in here because well uh, as it was pointed out I've, I'm trying to make a liquid oxygen liquid lock but at the same time I have to throw ice temperature shift plates in here to keep my thimble reeds alive so that my bathroom doesn't back up because that's where my overflow from my bathroom is going so I should probably sort that out and if I can kill two problems with one uh, build why not so how's this looking uh, yeah we got yeah I'm gonna hook up a liquid pump here and start the, the flowing of water yeah, because I'm being lazy, I am just going to hook up a pump like that. And then we will just uh, dump that into the system somehow. Uh, let's just dump it in there. Yeah, there's fine. Hook up a little bit of power and we should be golden. That should help fill the loop. Though I might want to dump in some more uh, ice temperature shift plates. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of water in this little tank of mine that I've made. You know what? That should be plenty. And it has begun. That will start the very, 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 very slow process of turning this whole place from icy chilly, which is not very good for my peppernut plants, into warm enough that the peppernut plants have a chance of survival, or at least growth. I'm putting in excess ones so I can get some, uh, I want to get the coffee machines up and running, or the, uh, yeah, the percolators, what are they called? Ah, whatever they're called. I want to get those machines up and running as well, so I thought having some spare peppernuts might not hurt. Uh, the plan is just to have this one layer high, but I put in all the extra water just so that we could fill up this system to start with. As you can see, that tepidizer, yeah, that, that thing really generates an awful lot of heat very, very quickly. Oh, yeah, I may have overfilled that system, haven't I? But that is fine. All we have to do is that, and I can just uh, clean out the system with a plumber, and that will take out one piece, one chunk, and it should start running. This will happen to you sometimes where you get clogged loops. Just take one blob of water out, and you should be fine. Sometimes you have to take two or three. There we go. Took out a blob of water. Whole thing's now functioning. Well, maybe I took out two or three blobs of water. Yeah, two. I took out two blobs of water by accident. Two blobs of water gone, the whole thing's functioning. A few minor modifications just to help it out. These granite pipes are not great at exchanging temperature. In fact, they're... Okay, they're pretty terrible. And what I want to make sure is, though, when they pass through this liquid pool, that they definitely get as much temperature as possible dumped into them. So for that, we're going to use aluminum. Aluminum is just a really great conductor. And we'll throw that in there. At least here, it'll get really great uh, conductivity. For the rest of the place, it will slowly but surely drag up the temperature. I mean, even if we check the temperature we're in now, how are we looking at here? It's up to seven degrees down the bottom, six. Yeah, okay, it gets... Uh, it's not really great the further out to the edges we get, but it's still better than most of the surrounding area. If you check the surrounding area, it's minus 20 to minus six. We've already managed to jump quite a lot of heat into this area doing this way. Anyway, uh, that should take care of most of the pepper nuts. I'm going to skip this forward a bit. And what happened to the pepper nuts that were there? How did I destroy those? Damn it. <laughs> you know what? It's fine. I left myself plenty of room for more peppernuts, so that accidental destruction of those two peppernut plants is fine. I can live with it. Well, uh, I'll get around to just uh, expanding this out as well. Also, I didn't have an awful lot of peppernut seeds. Turns out, uh, yeah, I haven't been growing them or multiplying their population anyway like I had been with the sleet wheat, so I barely have enough to get this done. But what I can do, or what I have been doing, is digging up all the... Caustic biomes. Caustic biomes contain sleepweed seeds, so I've got all these little ladders going in to dig up uh, little cracks you find. You know those cracks you see in uh, in different biomes, like, say, this here? But that biome is not one of the ones I cared about, but you'd see little cracks like that in the caustic biome. I was digging them out until I would find uh, the peppernut seeds. I think I should have just about enough so that it won't require me to wait until the first harvest before I can start expanding the population even further. Oh, and that one's already done already. You know what? Next. For the entrance in here, I went with uh, two viscogel liquid locks and I forgot to vacuum that out, didn't I? Uh, yeah, we'll put in a quick gas pump here and uh, we will vacuum this sucker out so that uh, the temperature can't get across. You need to have a vacuum in between, otherwise it will just act as a medium. Uh, yeah, we're going to... <laughs> okay, that's just ridiculous. The only way I can get out. I'm pretty sure one of those pipes is uh, vestigial, but I'm not going to cut it out now. And I'll just hook that up to power and we should be sorted. That was incredibly quick because it was a tiny space. Uh, done, dusted. That means this whole area is now separated. Oh, no. Put in a quick layer of uh, blocks at the bottom. I want to make sure that this place is well, 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 well insulated. I don't want any of that heat escaping out. And uh, what's that block there? That is not abyssalite. So yeah, we'll leave the abyssalite layer in there. That will be a perfect insulator anyway. And that should be it. It'll just be a case of waiting until the temperature catches up though. Mm. 
you know what, I might need to crank up the temperature a bit more in here. Unfortunate, but uh, I don't think the tepidizer is really hitting the temperatures we need to get these working properly. So we're going to crank this up to, say, 40 degrees. Just for now, though I would like to make sure I can put my timber reeds in here. If I can't, I can't, but uh, I would prefer if I could. So with all of that done, I need to continue this uh, in the background. I need to install more of these pepper nuts. So back in a minute. As you can see, temperature wise, that temperature is starting to spread out quite nicely throughout this entire uh, little farm. It's working out quite well. We've also got the pepper nuts out as far as the edge, but of course the temperature in there isn't quite warm enough yet. The oxygen's only at 30 degrees. It needs to get to 35 before these things start to grow. And the plants do have to absorb some of the heat as well. But we'll be getting there soon enough. Uh, downside though is I'm trying to plant the next layer and it's becoming problematic. Uh, the reason being, yeah, the pips don't want to plant in it. I've uh, tried planting there, 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 all these layers. And yeah, it seems pepper nuts are a little bit different to the other crops when it comes to planting. They don't like to be close at all to their siblings. Uh, maybe there's something else I'm missing out on here. Let's see if I uh, maybe have a check around. Yeah, this, I don't see any plants or anything that might be interfering with it. I'm also just building this one down as well. I'm uh, extending this using the natural tiles mod just to see whereabouts it is that the pips will start planting again. I think I'm going to have to extend my farm quite a little bit more than I intended to, which means I might have to move those pipes. But mm, not the not the end of the world. We can fix this pretty quickly. Oh, and those pepper nuts are finally starting to grow. Why is that one not going? Pressure? How is the air? Current gas pressure is 25.7 kilos. How is that possible? It's three kilos. Oh, there's blobs of hydrogen around here. It's probably causing some issues. You know what? Let's give uh, the hydrogen a space to go where it's out of the way. Yeah, see, get rid of some of this stuff. That should hopefully give space. You know what? Uh, I'll do this in the background and I'll figure out something a little bit more even. I want the hydrogen to maybe blob up in certain areas and just get out of the way of the rest of the gases so that this doesn't happen, that pressure halted thing. Uh, how are we doing down here? Now, let me do some more checking and see exactly where it is the pips will start planting again. So finally, it seems, yeah, you need an enormous amount of distance between plants when it comes to these pepper nuts. We're looking at base to base. Well, base to base is like 10 tiles. Wow. Ooh, that's unexpected. Okay, I need to make massive modifications to this farm. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to squish down a bunch of stuff. And, uh, hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'll just do all that in the background. Let's have a little quick jump forward in time to where we have finished this all off and we don't have to worry about, you know, going through all the boring things of what I did. Uh, you see here, though, I've changed up the plumbing. So right now... I've got this sort of flowing through here and that should hopefully, it'll, okay, I won't have enough water in the system. I'll have to top it up a little bit, but that does mean I can start deconstructing these. These no longer need to be there. Boom, 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 all the way across. Yep. That almost works out perfectly. It does only, we're only a little bit shy. Hmm. Perfect. Oh, one thing, you'll see these little gold chunks right here. That's where I'm putting in a piece of gold radiant pipe right beneath the plants. The reason for that uh, gold radiant pipe just helps transfer the temperature a little bit better. So I'm just going to do the same thing all the way along for all of them. Uh, that way, well, I dump the temperature exactly where it needs to be, right in the center of the plants, and it, it seems to be making all of them grow quite quickly. Uh, well, all of them are getting up to temperature correctly. I've uh, got the temperature here set to 37 degrees. I've reduced it to that, so hopefully I can get this all up to about the right temperature range. I want to be able to grow um, multiple types of plants in here. Once I get this row finished and uh, brought up to temperature, I'll probably... I might plant some thimble reeds here, though I don't know. I don't have room, do I? Yeah, I'll figure something out. I can plant them in between these either. One quick sweep later as well, and this whole area is nice and pristine and clean. Uh, oh, wait, no. One last piece. Uh, I just wanted to sweep it out. There was no point having any stuff in there that was going to mess with the temperature. This whole place should now be completely 100% sealed. Well, not quite. I had to leave the, pe the uh, pips in here because I haven't finished planting. I've run out of peppernut seeds. I want to... And until I get all of this planted in with peppernut seeds, the wild variants, I can't uh, put in my plants, my thimble reeds. I can't put them in. And why is something overheating? Liquid reservoir. Oh, yeah, I just launched a couple more rockets just now. Mm. Yeah, this is the worst positioning of a liquid reservoir I have ever done. I'm occasionally having to come back up here after uh, launches and just, you know, throw in some ice to help cool it down. Oopsie. <laughs> you know, for a base that's uh, got some pretty advanced features going on, we have some, you know, some nice advanced stuff in it. We've got a lot of old school tech in here that is just so messy and sloppy. But food is almost completely automated. I might want to insulate in the sleep wheat farms to stop the temperature fluctuations that they're getting too high. You know what? Let's have a quick look at the temperature overlay. Hmm. 
pepper nuts, almost up to speed. Like I said, those tepidizers really do, are amazing at transferring temperature. Everything else, pretty much about where we expected it to be. Uh, main base, yeah, core base is still freezing cold. Over here, yeah, yeah, no, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. So next up after that is all done. Um, well, I did want to put in the simple reads, but you know what? We'll put in the cooking facilities. We want to modify our cooking facilities so we have something a little bit more robust. However, I won't be able to cook anything until the first crop of pepper nuts comes in, but I think we can do some stuff in the background. We'll, uh, we can get rid of the ap apothecary and, ooh, as well as that, if I'm going to be relying on natural gas, I'm going to want to tap into some of the natural gas vents that are around the place. I believe I have two. There's one over here and there's a second one, ah, second one over there up in the top right. So I think we'll tap into this one and plug this one into our, uh, into our icy brick and we should be fine. Uh, you know what? I need to come up with a better name for this than icy brick. Um... Yeah. Any suggestions? Put them in the comments. The what was the last one? The hot one was the industrial sauna, or industrial. Mm, never mind. We'll get this started first. We'll worry about names later. To handle this, we are going to use visco gel. The reason being, visco gel is insanely handy for making a quick liquid lock. And well, we've got access to it, so why not? Makes our life an awful lot simpler. Then all we've got to do is dig in here real quick and put in a well a gas pump. Uh, oh, there's some chlorine down there. Might we want to take care of that? You know what? We might actually take care of the chlorine while we're in here. And also, at the same time, I should probably analyze that vent. Oh, you know what? I should... Did I analyze this one yet? Analysis complete. Perfect. I analyzed that one too. You know, I should analyze all the vents I've got going on. That might be an idea. So we've queued up an analysis on pretty much all the geysers and vents I've got around the map. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put in a gas pump in here and seal in this area. Uh, we don't really care too much about having storage, I suppose. Storage of the natural... Uh, well, I could expand this and put in a couple of... You know what? I don't care about storing the natural gas. Three gas tanks up here is usually more than enough storage for me. Uh, so let's just stick in a quick gas pump in here and be done with this. As you can see, we're, we're progressing rather rapidly. Uh, we might want to use an insulated gas pipe coming out of here. We don't want to be dumping all the heat from that natural gas into the surrounding atmosphere. Uh, it is going to be about 150C. Now, what is that gas pipe from? Oh, that is nothing important, which means that can go. Turns out that was an old oxygen pipe I had going down here. That was before everyone got their exosuits and didn't need it anymore. Though, wow, the carbon dioxide cloud, now that I think about it, is getting rather large. Might have something to do with all that coal power. Ooh. You know what, it's actually getting high enough that, okay, if it, it's going to take it a long while, but if it gets up to my base, I might have to do something about it. Bam, ladies, don't care about it. We'll take the ice. Don't worry, we'll be hiring more, more duplicates later, but... Right now, I can't really expand. This design was not built for expansion. It was built for uh, obtaining the uh, the achievements as quickly as possible. Anyway, all of that's done. Oh, that reminds me. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up. I ended up with germs down here, did I? Ah, blue water food poisoning germs. Yeah, some food poisoning germs did get in there. I knew it was going to happen eventually. I just wasn't too worried about it. Anyway, let's uh, let's finish this off and get our natural gas at least pumping. Oh, this reminds me, that's going to be double layered, is it not? Yeah. Someone finish those off. Done. Dusted, sealed up, ready to go. And if we check the gas overlay, the only thing in there is natural gas. So if the pressure in here is above one kilo, I want you to start pumping. Uh, why are you not pumping anymore? Ah, oh, yes. I have to hook it up on the other end. This is all made out of uh, mafic rock, these insulated gas pipes. If you're making insulated gas pipes, mafic rock is just the best there is. Except for, of course, ceramic, which is a bit better. And then uh, finally, there's insulated gas pipes made out of insulation, which is the final level. Uh, but let's see. What are these made out of? They're mafic rock as well. Do we have anything that I didn't upgrade to mafic rock? No, uh, nothing to test with. One second. Right here we have a sample of all the just insulated gas pipes you can have, and the worst one is granite. Uh, the only thing you really care about here is the thermal conductivity. Specific heat capacity is not so big a deal because that will even out. It, it applies in some circumstances, but if you're just transferring hot materials to an area or cold materials to an area and you don't want any heat exchange, thermal conductivity is all you care about. It's 0 0.106 for granite, sandstone 0 0.091, and then we've got three in a row that are all exactly the same. Igneous rock, 0 0.063, and uh, then it's... where is it? Ah! Sedimentary rock, 0 0.063, and insulated uh, obsidian, 0 0.063. It's only when you get to mafic rock, you get about half of that. It's half as conductive as those. That's why mafic rock is very popular, because it's just, there's plenty of it in the space biome, and yeah, it's pretty good. Then you've got ceramic, which is 0 0.919, which means it's it's better. It's better by about a third, a little bit over a third better. So, yeah, but ceramic is a lot harder to come by, and so for huge long runs, or for stuff where you don't care about the temperature differential, 
hugely. Maverick Rock is just cheap, cost efficient, and you can show it down wherever you want. Just a, a good thing to note. So anyway, now that that's plugged into there, what I want to do is I'm going to need to run a line out of here. Oh, I'm going to have to break this open, aren't I? Ah, wait, no, no. I could, of course, just do... Hmm. I want to break a line out of this because I need to run some natural gas from here over to my cooking station. Now, there's several different ways I could do it, but I want to make sure my cooking station never runs out. So I need to have it coming off my main area, which is going to be here. These gas tanks are my emergency, emergency backup power. And by that I mean they don't get burned unless I'm running out of petroleum, which should never happen. Theoretically. Hopefully. Uh, you know what? We can disconnect these. Oh, wait. No. No. We have got the pliers. We don't have to wait. We can just disconnect them like that. Boom. And all I'm going to do is run the natural gas from here up into my main base so that I can plug it into my uh, the, the cooker. The cooker requires natural gas. That should make sure I never run out of natural gas for my system. A quick review of this has reminded me how messy my base is getting. If I look up here, you'll see there's a lot of gas piping. I had to do a little bit of shenaniganry just to, to get that natural gas pipe where it needs to go, which is going to be in here in this cooking area. Later on, we'll be moving all of this, but I do want to be prepped to start moving into pepper bread as soon as I can. Decommissioning these is going to be a, a nice move, though the moment I decommission them, I encounter another problem. Uh, where is it? Uh, let's go with consumable ore. How is my coal supply looking? 560 tons. Well, okay, well, maybe not immediately a problem, but once I decommission these, I'm going to stop creating more coal, so I will have to transition away from coal power. And right now, I'm using coal for a lot of gener power generation spread out all over the map, and I want to centralize and get onto petroleum. Anyway, uh, let's see how we can figure this. We need to set up the new gas cooker. Uh, where is the... Yes, this gas range. Uh, what will we make it out of? Mm, copper, why not? So we need to set up the gas range. Then we also need to set up the ventilation for it, which means we need to put in... Oh, actually, that's going to be pretty simple. We'll just plug it in right there. That's it. I remember this being more complicated. Uh, that's going to give out carbon dioxide, but we don't care because everyone's in exosuits. <laughs> so it, it doesn't really matter. As for the heat, yep, don't care. Everyone's in exosuits. Uh, how's our barbecue looking down there? Barbecue's looking good. Unrefrigerated, but fresh. Uh, um, yeah, that should take care of all the food sections. At the same time, is this almost ready to be harvested? 59%. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? I think we've managed to get food sorted this round. I think we'll call that an episode about there. We've got, well, we've got the farming pretty much finished. Well, not quite. I still have to get the peppernuts in. Uh, once I've got some more peppernut seeds, we can finish off the bottom layer. Uh, we've got the natural gas set up or the natural gas cooker ready to go. So the moment, ooh, you know, let's see what it says in the recipes there. Yeah, pepper bread. Once we get pepper bread going, that will also give us a little bit of a, a morale bonus. Ooh, I want to see something. And I've got access to those. Will it show me up here in the consumables? I haven't checked yet, but it used to be or is it? Uh, nope, no listing. Plus 16 morale for spicy tofu, plus 8 for barbecue. Uh, according to this, if you look here, Frost Burgers have a food quality of plus 6. Ambrosial. These uh, pepper bread only has a food quality of plus 5. Superb. A pepper bread and spicy tofu and all of those give plus... Or pepper bread and spicy tofu give plus 16. But I was wondering if they upgraded Frost Burgers to give something like plus 20 or something like that. Hmm. I should really check the notes. Never mind. I'll find out when I get around to being able to make some. Oh yeah. But uh, I think I'll cut this out here. I think we've got some good pro good production done today. Anyway, next up, it will be sorting out power. We've sorted out infinite food. All we need to do now is sort out infinite power. Once we've sorted out infinite power, then we've got the two main stumbling blocks done with. And we've already effectively got infinite water because we've got all three of our water sources all feeding into this one tank, which feeds into our oxygen production system. So next up, I think, will be a petroleum boiler. I'm thinking probably over here somewhere where I've got lots of space and it's close to the oil biome. Well, yeah, there's plenty of open space there that I can demolish. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this trip down farming lane and uh, good luck.